Tyson Goldsack took to a little interior decorating in the rooms at the MCG. Not the ideal warm-up for a grand final rematch. Collingwood hoping it wasn't a bad omen. The Pies lost all three of their matches against Geelong last year, but it's the decider that stings the most. Both sides have had indifferent starts to the season. Collingwood would have first use of the ball. Hand pass comes from Dawes. Pendlebury lines up and kicks the goal. What a great start. Geelong haven't touched the footy yet. They would eventually get their hands on it, pouncing on a pie's mistake for their first. Oh. Shaw into Hawkins. Hawkins kicks the goal. Little would separate the two teams in the first quarter. Pendlebury and Pozziali would exchange majors, both sides punishing the turnover. That is a thumping kick. Well, they found a goal kicker in the last three weeks. It would open an eight-point quarter-time lead for Collingwood. And when Didak found for solo after the break, it was soon out to 14. The kick is on the way, and generally he's very accurate. This is no exception. Geelong would respond immediately through Duncan. That's coming back. It's a goal. But the Pies were dominating the ruck contest, and they'd make the most of the advantage. Runs away from the centre circles. Can they muster the quick reply? Loose ball at the back. Punk off the ground. Dane Swan would begin to terrorise the Cats' backline, still minus Matthew Scarlett. But each time the Pies looked to skip clear, the Cats would pull one back. Had to wait for it, made it sticky. Stokes grabs it and kicks a goal. It would be Pozziali from the centre square getting the Cats within a kick. Loose ball. I don't think anyone touched it. Long range goal from back in the middle. James Pozziali in his 50th. But just as the Cats had appeared to snatch the momentum, Pendlebury dipped into his bag of tricks. Runs to the 50, takes it on. That's a magnificent kick. Oh, what a beauty. That is Buddy Franklin-like. He would hand the Pies a nine-point half-time lead. The Cats would claw one back early in the third term through Chapman. But again, Collingwood would respond. It'll be a mark right in front and Goldsack's going to keep the goals ticking over. And the Pies would keep the goals coming as they dominated the third term. Beams under pressure, can't get it to a teammate, but Pasolo got it from Mackey's hands and goes in and kicks it. Stevie Johnson would throw everything at the footy, trying to halt the Pies' progress. Oh, great courage by Johnson. Pasolo losing nothing in the courage stakes either. As the third quarter descended into an arm wrestle, the Pies stretching the margin to four goals early in the final term. The kick is on the way. It's massive and it's good. But the Cats would keep punching from the ropes with goals to Duncan and then Hawkins. Oh, beautiful. Threaded the hand pass to Hawkins and Hawkins kicks the goal. Travis Cloak would take the lead back out to three, but Geelong would just keep coming through Stokes. He's kicked a well, the little fella. Gets set home. He's kicked two and Geelong get within two. The Cats would continue to stalk Collingwood as the clock ticked down. Spinning out of trouble. It's a goal to Stokes. He's got three. How about that? In mid-turn, he popped it through. So look at their scores are level, and the Cats will not be denied. Scores level. The pressure intense. Who would blink? Solo wants 50. Gets oh, it. Can you believe it? Josh Hunt, the villain, giving away the 50 and a gimme goal. Scott Pendlebury would have the final say for Collingwood. What a term he's had. Long bomb going back his doors, and it's gone the right way. It's bounced. The footy barracks for Collingwood, and so do they. The Magpies hanging on to claim a two-goal victory over Geelong. David Murdoch, Big Pond Sport.